on today's live open daily, goodbye app lab. About a month from now, the redheaded stepchild of the quest store is going away, and while I generally think this is a good thing, there are some downsides. We're going to cover both the pros and the cons. I'm your host, Live Up and Mike. App Lab was first introduced by Meta in February 2021, roughly about five months or so after the Quest 2 first launch. And it was meant to, and I'm going to quote directly from their blog here, a new way for you to distribute apps directly to consumers safely and securely via direct links or platforms like SideQuest without requiring store approval and without sideloading. The Quest Store will remain curated at the same high level quality, but now App Lab lets you get the app directly to your community, even if it's early in development, experimental, or aimed at a unique audience. There are other platforms available like SideQuest and like Itch, but you always had to do, like it says here in this blog piece, you had to always sideload that, meaning you had to plug your headset into your computer directly and then download the APK from whatever third party site you use and download it directly into your headset. And then it will always show in a section of your headset's library called Unknown Sources. It will never be directly in your main library. App Lab took some of that away and it also gave you some form of visibility on the storefront. But as this blog post talks about curation, there were some separations from it to keep App Lab games pretty much hidden on the store. Yes, you did have a store page and you got a direct link to that. That was actually very helpful for a lot of developers. However, if anyone searched for your game on the App Lab, you had to scroll past all of the results from the main meta store. And at the very, very bottom, there was this one called Experimental Apps or App Lab or something like that. It kind of changed over the years. You had to click on that and then it brought you to your app lab results once you clicked on the actual store link directly from there or if you just open the store link from like a different social media site or something there was always this really ugly pop-up that said this app may still be development and does not meet meta standards that alone would scare a lot of people off you had to click okay on that to be able to go to the store page I guess this was a way for Meta to insulate themselves from any kind of legal issues if, say, you download the app that bricked your headset. But in reality, it was a deterrent from people actually buying the app, so a lot of stores on App Lab struggled to get sales. And then because of the way the search results were, visibility was at all-time low. You got the direct link, and that was very helpful, and you got the metrics that were available in the Quest Developer Hub. But beyond that, you were kind of put in the basement of the store. You were like the gremlin that no one ever talked about and you really had to fight to get visibility. There are a lot of stores that have graduated from App Lab. They actually had a whole section on their store called App Lab Graduates. And there's been probably a couple hundred games that have come through App Lab and gone all the way to the main store, but the process remained highly curated and there were different steps, like different requirements to get your game on App Lab versus the main store. The restrictions on App Lab were a lot looser. So now skip ahead about three years to April, 2024. Meta put out this blog post saying that they're gonna change App Lab. We covered this entire post in the recent podcast. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Just going to hit the very top of it. Quote, we believe a more open platform will define the next generation of computing and is the best way to bring the power of mixed reality to as many people as possible. To that end, we just shared our vision for Meta Horizon OS and the Meta Horizon Store. For developers, this means we are making it easier for you to build titles and reach your audiences on the platform. Quote, we're also significantly changing the way we manage the Meta Horizon Store. We're shifting our model from two independent services, Store and App Lab, to a single unified open storefront. This shift will happen in stages, first by making many App Lab titles available in a dedicated section of the store, which will expand the opportunity for those titles to reach the audiences. In the future, new titles submitted will go directly to the store and App Lab will no longer be a separate distribution channel. All titles will still need to meet basic technical, content, and privacy requirements to publish to the store. Titles are reviewed at submission and may be re-reviewed as they scale to more people. Like App Lab today, all titles that meet these requirements will be published. And now on July 5th, Meta released this new blog detailing the specifics of what this looks like, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about today. Getting into the blog post here, starting August 5th, we are moving all content previously shipped in App Lab to be discoverable on the Meta Horizon Store. This includes all apps under development, apps under review, and all existing App Lab apps. We're excited to deliver better opportunities to expand your reach with Meta Horizon users, and we've been working on resources to help you navigate these changes while maintaining a high standard of quality throughout the ecosystem. To help ensure a smooth submission process and help you prepare for this transition, we're providing details below on what this change entails, along with the recommended steps to get your apps ready. I should point out that this blog post is written to developers, not necessarily to consumers, but there's still a lot of really good information here. Next section, getting your app ready for the store. Dive in to learn more about what actions you need to take and the resources available to support your success in the store. Number one, review virtual reality checks, BRCs. We're gonna talk more about those later. To make sure your app meets BRC requirements to ensure better visibility. 
Number two, go through your app metadata, descriptions, comfort level, keywords, categories, genres, and assets to make sure it's up to date. Number three, this one's really important. We will have an early access badge you can enroll in. This is a good route to set user expectations if your app is still a work in progress. Number four, in case of an influx of users, prepare any scalable resources like cloud tools, matchmaking, etc. And number five, consider alternatives to publishing to store below if you feel that your app is not ready. Any App Lab developers will get an email right away when their apps are been moved to the store permanently. Apps submitted to the Meta Horizon store must meet a variety of virtual reality checks, BRCs, involving functionality, performance, security, accessibility, and more to be approved for distribution. Meeting all BRCs will help improve visibility and strengthen trust between you and your app's users while helping to ensure an enjoyable experience for everyone. Another important note here, we've updated our VRCs to consolidate the Meta Horizon store and App Lab requirements into one guide to ensure a smooth and simple process. Updated VRCs your app must pass to get onto the store include the following, all currently required App Lab VRCs, and then there's five related to assets and one related to functional. We'll get more into those a little bit later in this podcast. You can also review test plans to understand the exact criteria we use to test your apps in the review process. Then there's instructions here to update your metadata. That's like your keywords, your long description of your game, the one that comes up when you go to the actual store page, creative assets like your banner, your trailer, uh, the screenshots you upload. So if I as a consumer, so if I as a consumer search for action single player, I should, keyword should, get all the action single player games on the Quest Store. Right now you don't, and we're gonna talk about that when we get to the cons of this list. Continue on through the blog post here. This one's about early access. If your app is still a work in progress, you can now activate early access to help set expectations regarding user experience and reviews. Early access is available to developers who are publishing their first app submission to the store and App Lab apps. Apps that enable early access will still be discoverable and searchable in the store. On August 5th, apps who have opted into early access will have a badge on their product details page. If your app is in App Lab, you have until August 5th to select this flag in the app submission page on the developer dashboard. After August 5th, you will have to create a new app entirely to enable early access. That's going to be key because I can guarantee a lot of developers are going to miss that. And then come August 6th, they're going to be like, oh, I meant to tag it early access. Then they're going to have to delist their apps altogether and upload a new one or just live with it. There's a couple of pictures here what the early access is going to look like. If you're on the search results, I'm looking at it right now. I'll pop it up on the screen if you're watching the video version of this podcast. Just below where your price is, there's a little like chemistry beaker that's halfway full and it says right next to it early access. It's very small, it's unintrusive, it's not that gigantic pop up we used to get when you search for App Lab games a few months ago, but it still lets you know that the game is in early access and you can kind of decide whether or not you want to pick it up accordingly if you're someone who doesn't like to buy early access games. And then on the main store page, right under the disclaimer that says your app may access your display name, username, profile pictures, firstborn child, your DNA sample, your shoe size, all that stuff. Just below that, it says early access, try apps and games while they're still being built. And again, it's a little beaker symbol and a little click here link to learn more. Much better is out of the way, but it's still there to kind of warn consumers if you don't want an early access game. And it's a tool to help developers because they can say, hey, it's clearly an early access. This wasn't a thing that was available on the Quest Store before. App Lab itself was basically considered early access. We'll talk more about that later. Last piece of the blog is alternatives to publishing to the store. If you like additional time to fine tune your apps, ensure you're meeting all required VRCs or want additional time to get user feedback before launching your app on the store, you can delist it from the developer dashboard. MetaQuest release channel features provide a simple and convenient solution for releasing an early version of your app to limited audiences and gain additional user feedback before submitting it for a full launch. Private release channels enable you to invite users via email or URL and added users will continue to have access to updated versions of your build until they are removed or the release channel is deleted. Last bit here, once you're published to the store, you'll be able to leverage a variety of monetization and engagement features previously only available to apps in the Meta Horizon store. Our next blog series of posts, they'll talk about some other stuff like A-B testing, subscriptions, try before you buy, short links, and a whole bunch of other different things that weren't previously available to App Lab games. Okay, so pros and cons of this news. We're gonna start with the pros because I like to start with the positive parts. Number one, this is gonna be great for game visibility and discovery. I said before that when you went to an App Lab game before, this before the change in April, there was this gigantic pop-up that basically said, this app is experimental, are you sure you wanna do this? You have to click on okay. It read like a legal statement and a way for Meta to basically cover their butts. That has since gone away, but like I talked about the last time we talked about App Lab on the podcast, now App Lab is tucked away in its own little special section. Right now there's a clickable button that will take you to a special App Lab section of the main Meta store. And that's just below where the search bar is. And in the rotated banner, there's a whole banner that says, step in the App Lab, try experimental apps and games still in development. 
basically early access, but Meta never actually said early access until this blog post started. Sticking on the early access point, one thing, this is on a separate blog post, just want to point this out. All user reviews received during the time the app was in early access will have a specific label on them so that users can better understand the context behind the review. This is a great thing. Steam does this too. Steam has like tags that said, receive the product for free or early review copy, basically ways for you to disclose that you got the game in an early state. You did not pay for the full release of the game and people can, when they're reading their review, kind of color their opinions on your review accordingly. This is a good thing and I'm glad they're including it. So in general, this is gonna be better for developers and for consumers in terms of being able to find these games more quickly. There's a theory in web design that the number of users who get to your page drops sharply for every single additional click they have to do to get there. So for instance, if you were searching for App Labs games under the old system, you have to first search for the game and then scroll all the way to the bottom of the results and then click on the experimental app section and then you get a whole new section of results and then you click to the store page and then you have to click okay on that disclaimer that popped up and then you get to the game. So that's multiple clicks, which is basically added friction to get to your game if you did not already have a direct link to it if someone was just searching for your game. Speaking to someone who works for a developer with multiple games on App Lab, this is something that came up all the time when I would reach out to like content creators or in like Reddit's and Facebook groups they would always say, hey, I searched for your game on the store and I couldn't find it. And then I provided a direct link and they would get to it. But there were so many people who cannot find games on App Lab just by looking for them. It might've been something that they saw on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or whatever. And then they go and search for the name of the game and they can't find it. This removes all those barriers. That's gonna be fantastic for discoverability. Second point, no more App Lab restrictions. So in addition to like the lowered standards to get on App Lab versus the main store, there were also certain features that if you were on App Lab, you did not have access to. For instance, we see game bundles all the time where you'll see one or two games bundled together for like a discounted price. If your game was in App Lab, you were not eligible for bundles. There's actually a blocker in the developer hub that says this is only available for games published on the official MetaQuest store. So that left developers with a game on App Lab to either use your promo code to discount the game by itself or go to sites like Fanatical or Humble Bundle to get together with other developers to get your game in a bundle that way, but you couldn't use a bundle on the main Quest store. App Lab stores cannot use DLC content. You could use IAP, which is in-app purchases. So that's like cosmetics and in-game currency, things like that. That's how an app like Gorilla Tag made $26 million and spawned hundreds and hundreds of Gorilla Tag clones that unfortunately we're gonna see a lot of those move to the main store when this whole move takes place next month. So you could do IAPs, you could do in-app purchases, but you can't do DLC content. So for instance, uh, recently Eastfire One just released their first content, the Sydney missions or something like that for $4.99. Walkabout Mini Golf has done, then there's a game like Walkabout Mini Golf that releases new courses all the time as paid DLC for like $2.99 or $3.99 a pop. If they were on App Lab, they wouldn't be able to do that. You would have to buy it inside the app itself. You couldn't buy it directly from the store or you couldn't get this to someone else, which again, is just added friction. There's also an ads process through Meta where you can link like your store or your developer's Facebook page or their Instagram page, and you can run ads directly through Meta, which gave you access to a whole bunch of advanced metrics, conversion rates, click through rates, things like that, that you wouldn't have if you were just running, let's say a promo code and all you can see were the sales numbers, but you don't get any demographic info like their gender, their age, their location, their general location, like their country of origin, things like that. This ads process gives you access to a lot more robust information that again, if you're an app lab, you didn't have. All those barriers are now removed, which means developers are gonna be able to more effectively market their games and do pretty much whatever they want it to them without all these restrictions. The last good point is early access itself as a term. This is something that is pretty much understood by all gamers. Most of us know what like early access and beta means, open beta, closed beta, whatever. But if you said App Lab to a person, especially someone who is completely new to VR, they kind of look at you like, I don't know what that means. Same thing if you said something like side quest. It was just something that most people didn't understand the concept of. And I can't tell you the number of times, cause I looked through all this stuff for my day job, the number of times I saw someone on Reddit or on Facebook say, so what exactly is App Lab? How do I get a game from App Lab? I don't understand. These posts pop up on a daily basis because it's App Lab. But if you say, hey, this is an early access game, most people understand that. And then there are the bad points. First and foremost, the meta store is still a mess. If you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at live open mic, you'll actually find a video where I went through all of my problems I had with the MetaQuest store. And the first thing I talked about was how bad the search functionality was, especially if you're searching on desktop. On the on your phone, the meta app is not on your phone and the meta app is not quite that bad, but especially on desktop, it's a horrific experience. You can't sort your results, you can't filter your results. I'm sorry, let me take that back. You can actually sort your results but the sorting doesn't work. 
For instance, if you sort it by release date, sometimes we get all the games that were coming soon. Sometimes all the games that are coming soon will be at the bottom. You can't sort ascending or descending. It was just those options. If you sort it price high or low, again, you get all the coming soon games coming first. If you sort it low, there was no way to filter out all the free games. The sorting generally didn't work. Like for instance, you sort it by release date, it would go by the last time the app was actually updated, not when it was released. So if a game posts a new update, like let's say Walkabout Mini Golf, that might be at the top of your results, even though that game came out several years ago now. I am hoping, I am praying, I'm crossing my fingers, my toes, and my eyes that Meta, in the process of doing this over the course of the next month, fixes the really god awful indexing that the store has right now because otherwise we're about to dump something like 2000 new games on the meta store and if the searching is this bad already for about 600 games not jump that to like 2600 it's going to be a complete mess so i really hope they fix the searching on that because right now it's just completely broken second point is by dumping over 2000 games to the store at once um you've been on steam recently have you looked at their search results have you looked at their storefront it's not that hard to find a popular game, but if you're looking for like a good indie or something to play, you're going to do a lot of shoveling through a lot of crap because frankly, a lot of crap gets put on Steam, especially in VR. I cannot count the number of times because I look at new releases on Steam every single week for PC VR. I cannot count the number of times that I've seen a new porn game or two new porn games right at the top of my search results. Yes, you can turn that off, but then there are some games like there are some shooters, for instance, that label themselves adult only, even though they really shouldn't. So if you want to get those search results, you have to leave the adults only filter off so you can get every single thing, which means you're going to get Hello Sexy Neighbor and all these other games like that. There's a lot of garbage that gets pushed to Steam because it's not curated. And while there is a level of curation still on the meta store, it's going to be much, much lower than it was before, which means get out your shovels because we're going to be digging through a whole lot of messy not ready for prime time apps not to mention there's going to be a lot of developers who probably have not touched their app lab games in quite some time they might even moved on to like you know what just abandoned the game entirely and said hey i'm just going to go back to like mobile gaming or console gaming or pc gaming in terms of development they haven't touched their app lab game in a while come august 5th those games are going to be pushed to the main store as actual games they're not going to be pushed as like early access or demos or anything like that so there's going to be a lot of games that we the consumers are going to think are fully released games when in reality they were pretty much early access games or like early versions of games that the developer never actually finished so the honest is going to be on us to do our research properly look at reviews and things like that so even though there's less friction to get to your game once we do get there there's going to be i fear a general higher level of distrust because there's going to be so many bad games available. I don't know how many really, really awful Gorilla Tag clones got pushed through the App Lab and SideQuest before they finally cut that off and said we're not taking any more of these, but all those are about to hit the main store right now. So yeah, buckle up. And the last con is the reduced lack of curation. I talked about the virtual reality checks a couple of times earlier when I was reading the blog post. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into those now. This is gonna make some people laugh because in the last few years across Quest, PC VR, really just across all the gaming, we've gotten a lot of the games that were just straight up broken. Just non-functional should not have ever made to the storefront in the first place. Meta does have a quality assurance process as does Pico and Sony and Nintendo and Microsoft, not necessarily Steam, we'll talk more about them in a minute. But in general, Meta does have a list and that's what these VRCs are. They're basically a checklist that they go through to make sure that your app is pretty much not entirely broken. I'm not going to read through the entire list of VRCs because it's, it's fairly long. I'll leave a link to this in the show notes if you want to check it out for yourself. But basically, you have to go through all the required App Lab VRCs. And then there's a short list of additional ones that you have to get to that used to be for the main meta store that weren't required for App Lab. Number one is functional point four. The app must not lose the user's data. This was not a requirement for App Lab games. So if you bought the game on App Lab and never lost your save data, just know that this wasn't required for them to get on the store because again, the game is pretty much considered early access. The save functionality might not be functioning correctly. That might be something they're still working on, but the game is still in a playable state, which is why it got to App Lab in the first place. So I'm glad this check is in place at least, but all the rest of these have to do with store assets. Uh, asset point number one, the logo must be on the transparent background. Again, this wasn't required for App Lab. Asset point number two, store cover art images must have a clear logo without the strenuous text, taglines, or banners. Asset point number three, store cover art must not include text in the top or bottom 20% of the image. Asset point number four, hero art must include the branding of the app centered in the image. Hero art is the first image you see when you go to a game store page on the Quest store. It's that first one that almost always has the logo of the game right there in the center. This was a requirement for the main store. But if you go through like SideQuest, for instance, sometimes the first thing you saw wasn't the game's logo. It might have been just a screenshot or take it directly into the trailer. So you don't know what game you were looking at. 
Last one is asset point number nine. If using immersive image layers, the immersive object left, immersive object right, and the immersive logo images must have a transparent background. Again, this is something that wasn't required on App Lab. So then looking through the rest of these, there are some of these that are requirements for App Lab and for the main MetaQuest store, but then there are some that were just recommended for App Lab, and that's gonna be what the standards are for this moving forward. They're not changing anything else. So some of these that are just recommended for App Lab, you may start running into on full releases which may create a massive headache in terms of like quality assurance. So just to name a couple here, if your app requires internet connectivity for its core functionality, inform users without an active internet connection that one is available, you weren't required to do that on the App Lab, it was just recommended. The app must continue to download content if the user removes the headset. You ever take your headset off because the game required an update, maybe you went to the restroom or went to get a drink of water or a snack or something like that, came back and your game was ready to go. Under this new system, if you pick up a game that used to be quote App Lab, and who wants to just be left standing there waiting for your app to update because you have to keep your headset on the whole time. A user must not get disconnected from a multiplayer match if they access the universal menu or remove their headset. We've all been there before. If you just lift your headset a little bit too far, there's that proximity sensor that's just above where the lenses are. If you come out of that section, your headset might go to sleep. If that happens, you get disconnected from multiplayer match if you're playing on App Lab. On the main MetaQuest store, that's not supposed to be the case. You're supposed to be able to reconnect immediately unless your internet connection gets jumbled up somehow. Uh, apps that support localization must default to the user's configured language and default to English if the app doesn't support that language. So if your primary language is not English or worse yet, you don't understand the lick of English. One, I don't understand why you're listening to this podcast. But if you're in that boat, then you're going to have some issues if you pick up a game that, again, used to be on App Lab because this is just a recommended feature. It's not a requirement. Uh, here's another one for applications that support hand tracking. Hands must render in the correct position and orientation and must animate properly. This was a recommended feature for App Lab. It was not a requirement. And that's not on that list of things I looked at earlier. So this is just not going to be a thing. So if you're using the game with hand tracking, your hands might be here if you're watching on the video, but your VR hands might be out here because that's no longer a requirement or at least a strict of a requirement. Now, most developers worth their salt are not going to do that to you, but again, this is a slippery slope we're going down here. But we'll give Meta credit because they did change one that always bothered me when I play a bunch of App Lab games. The requirement is single player apps must pause when the user removes the headset or opens universal menu. That was not the case with App Lab before. So if you were playing a single player game, let's say you're playing a shooter and you need to pause the game to get a drink of water or do whatever, or you want to pull up the universal menu, maybe you need to check your recording settings or adjust your brightness or your volume you can still be shot. You can still be attacked by zombies or whatever game you were playing because the game was not required to pause that. They did change that for App Lab. I'm really thankful about that. This is one of the first things I look for because oh boy, have I played a lot of App Lab games that did not pause and I was caught completely off guard and ended up dying. So when you're lowering the level of curation, you end up with something like Steam. For those who don't know, to get a game on Steam, you have to pay an entry fee. I think it's still $100 last time I checked and you get assigned a Steam quality assurance person, but all their job is to do is to make sure that you have a working build. It might not even be a complete build because then you can use early access for that, but you have to submit a build that actually works in either a headset or on PC. The QA person uh, boots the game, makes sure it works, boom, thumbs up, you've got a game on Steam already. And you just have to pay the entry fee for that. The level of curation on Steam is much, much, much lower than what it is on the Meta Store right now. And even with this app lab changing them lower the requirements, it's still higher than Steam, but it's still lowered because there's gonna be a lower standard to get your game to the main store. So like I said in my last point, we can prepare for an influx of crap because there are gonna be some developers who cannot get their game to the main Meta Quest store because they couldn't hit all of the main Quest store requirements. Well, now some of those requirements are loosened or just done away with altogether. So we can see a couple of games hit the store that frankly aren't ready for prime time. And again, the burden falls back to us, the consumer, to properly do our research and make sure that the game is in a state that's ready for us to play. So while there were a lot of friction points removed in this, and generally, again, I think this is a really good thing. We as consumers, we as gamers, are gonna have to be a little bit more on guard about what we're looking at and what we're considering to buy. I know some people who will just buy anything that looks interesting, but if you're like me, you're a little bit tighter with your money, this just means I have to do a little bit more research in every single game that I look at to make sure that's in a state that's ready to play. So it's a distinct possibility that if we get enough crappy games hit in the store, 
and the trust of the consumer starts to erode a little bit, you're gonna see a decrease in like day one sales and week one sales while people are waiting for other people to play it and post reviews to let them know if the game is any good or not, or to just to make sure that the game's not broken. Or you might see another situation extended to the other podcast we did about the discount culture, where even more people are gonna be inclined to like wait for a sale or get a referral code and not purchase the game at full price. There is a danger of that. I'm not trying to doom speak, but it really depends on how carefully Meta curates the store. And frankly, they need to fix the searching and indexing. I cannot stress that enough. It is a mess. It needs to be fixed. That's a wrap for this episode of Live on the Daily. We come to you five times a week, sometimes twice a day, sometimes five separate days a week, and depending on how my editing schedule goes, but I try to get five podcasts out to you every single week. You get Live Open Daily on Apple Podcasts, iHeart, Spotify, and YouTube. Also check out my other podcast, the XR Remix Podcast, and check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Live Open Mic. I stream VR there several days a week. Thanks, and I'll catch you on the next one.